Hey guys and girls, my name's Dan. Welcome back to The Forge. In this episode of Trust Mum Blacksmith, let's make something from the blacksmith spider. So this is part one of the first series uh, of this series of Blacksmith's Manual Illustrated. Um, I will be working through all the projects in this book, or most of the projects in the book. There's 208 pages in this book. Um, and I think roughly there are in the region of about 90-ish doable projects in here. Um, there are some in here that are a bit ambitious that I might leave till the very end to celebrate coming to the end of the book. Um, but what we're going to do first of all is I'm going to start with my patrons who have picked certain, um, uh, certain things to make out of this book. Then after I've done the patrons, I've got my two uh, Blacksmith Bible book winners. Uh, and then after I've done the Blacksmith Bible book winners, I will then go back to page one and I will work through the, um, the Blacksmith's Manual Illustrated um, start to finish. Now this is a book that was written by J.W. Lillico, uh, or well it's his, his journals that were compiled into a book at least anyway. It's very comprehensive and it was written from the position of a workshop foreman. So this is a bit of a disclaimer, if you're expecting me to do everything by hand from this book, you are sorely mistaken. Um, I will be using the power hammer, I will be using my coke forge, I will be using a lathe, I will be using drills, I will be using pretty much everything in this workshop except from arc welding processes. Um, that is pretty much the only thing that isn't spoken about in this book. Um, and hopefully by the end of it we'll have a nice collection of tools and you guys will have been able to work through this series with me and be able to build up your skills and your basic skills all the way to the very complicated stuff like multi, multiple fire worlds with like 90 degree corners and stuff like that. So I don't know if we're going to be able to do some of that stuff because I think it really should be done with wrought iron. But that aside, we're going to get started nonetheless. Now the first episode is going to be calipers and other blacksmith tools etc and this is for Ginge Taylor. Basically uh, I'm going through the book uh, and I'm going to start by making these calipers. Um, now Ginge asked for uh, me to make the dividers, I am going to make the dividers as well. So this first episode is going to be in two parts. Um, so we're going to make the calipers today hopefully and then we are going to go on and make the, um, the dividers and then I'm going to talk about the square and these other pieces shortly. Cool. Okay, so it's these calipers that we're making today, these double-sided calipers. That's because if you're making rectangular stock, sometimes you need to be able to measure two different measurements. Um, and we're going to be making the square nut, and I'm going to, ch not cheat, but I've, uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do with the square nut. Uh, and then um, I've got to sort out these washers somehow, and these are the arms and so on and so forth. I'm keeping this very simple, this first project. I think this is a great place to start. Uh, it's a very simple, very easy project to do, uh, and um, I'm sure you can do this with a normal rivet or maybe a little tack weld if you have a welder at home and that will sort you out for some of these problems that you might face in this situation. So okay so for this I'm going to be using a piece of 20 by 8 mil stock um, which is 3 quarters by 5 16 stock. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be I'm just going to go and see what happens. Um, I should think the end of the calipers are going to be about 4 inches or 100 mil and then the handle itself is going to be probably double so about 8 inches something like that. Um, I'm going to punch a square hole in the middle for the um, rivet thingy to go into uh, and I'm going to punch a hole at one end for the handle and I'm going to use um, the uh, hot cut to split the end and just forge these into a little bit of a taper uh, to make the body. And then subsequently I'm then going to take another piece of exactly the same stock and forge it into the arms, two of which I need. And um, like I said before, um, I have machined up this little pin, I know it's not even, um, but basically I'm going to forge this centrepiece square. And then once I've forged that square I'm going to machine it down so it fits nice and snug inside there, um, which should hopefully allow me to have... Um, um, some rivets that are going to work really tidily, but we will see. Our first job is to make a little moustache shaped uh, item on the end of this piece of bar, and in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift this up at about 45. Not very shallow. Taper on the end of the bar. I 
that will then be able to split in half. So I've just forged it into a bit of a taper there. Um, I want this to have the same cross section that way. And I want it to be reasonably straight. Like so. I'm just going to take um, my hot cut. And I'm just going to lay this on here. And hope that... That's about the middle. Oh, yes, nice. Okay, so I'm going to use my third, my third arm. Grab that there like so. And a nice, good bit of tension. So, I'm just going to come in here, get this reasonably warm, come in here with a rasp and just get rid of some of these horrible bits. Okay, so just going to come 100 mil or four inches up to here, like so. Roughly guess the middle, somewhere around there. Uh, try the centre punch. Here it is. Just take my centre punch, mark that there, and then just take my square punch. Get it nice and square on there. We are lovely. Let's put that in the fire. Yep. This process is pretty much the same as punching a round hole, except from the shape of your punch is just a bit different. I also find that um, the The shearing process is a bit higher. With something like this. Here we are three. Okay. Back in the fire for drifting. Okay, so this is a machine piece that I've made. And basically, what I want to do is make this an octagon. Uh, not octagon, make this square, I hope. So I keep turning it through 90. I hope that it goes square. Okay, there we have it, the square peg in a square hole with the round bits on the outside. It fits quite nicely, it's quite snug. 
Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to machine this down so it's the right. I'm going to machine this down so it's the right size, and um, hopefully that's all going to work. Okay, so here's the uh, rivet that I've manufactured, uh, nice and square, and it fits snugly, very snug in inside that square. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, the full efficiency of steel, uh, and I'm going to get it hot, this piece hot, and I'm going to keep this piece nice and cold, and I'm going to shrink fit this rivet inside that hole. And basically, that involves getting that hot, that expands, and then we're going to place this in and let it cool down and hopefully it should stay put. Okay, so we just quenched it off and it's in there. It's uh, at 90 degrees. It's, I think if I give this a tap with a hammer, it's gonna come out. If, uh, if, you, if you wanted to, you could uh, weld this in uh, I'm even sure you could get this all hot and fire weld that together to some degree. Um, I don't think that's going anywhere and once it's all riveted together it's not going to budge at all, I don't feel. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it as that, I think. Okay, when you forge your tapers for your uh, for the arms of your calipers, you want the taper to be one-sided and one side flush and flat, so that when you bend it up, it gives you that iconic, that iconic uh, caliper shape. Let's just go a little bit more, a bit further up. A bit more pressure. That's in. Right. So you get that iconic caliper shape. Okay, so what we've got here is the arms that you saw me forge the tapers out and bend them up like that. Now I've drilled the holes and I've just rounded these off with a file. Okay, and basically you can see that that looks like a set of calipers now. They don't line up, um, they line up to the points, but they cross over at the minute, so I need to adjust that. Now, something else I've had to make here, and I've done this again on the lathe because I'm being lazy are these little washers. Now they're about five mil thick or a quarter of an inch thick and then they've got a very deep chamfer inside and that's that's basically to create like a spring. So these are going to go on top like this here um, and then this gets riveted together cold and there's a reason for this to rivet together cold and it's pretty straightforward reason is I need to retain the spring tension 
in this part here. Sorry about the trailer that just went past. So I'm going to do that now. All I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to work out how much of this material I need to keep. And I'm just going to chop it off with a saw. Uh, and then I'm going to cold rivet that over. Okay, so I'm just going to hold this here on the anvil like so. Take the rounding side on my hammer. over cold if I can. Right, let's flip this this way. Start on this side, make sure everything's down. Okay, well, I'm very pleased with the outcome of these. They look really good. And um, the, well, they're, bit, <laughs> they're very tight when they were quite wide open. But they, they line up, they look tidy, um, and uh, I'm sure that they will provide service for someone for years to come. Uh, they're, yeah, I'm very happy with the outcome of those and um, they do exactly what they say on the tin basically. Uh, the little spring washers work quite nicely um, I, I don't, I mean you could open these up quite wide should you require and the uh, square piece inside locks them up nicely which is really good um, and for me uh, if these were mine uh, which they are not. Um, I would, I would definitely, uh, yeah, I would definitely find these very useful. I think I'm going to have to make myself a pair. And they didn't take very long. They took about an hour, two-ish hours to make. Um, and the reason for the machine is the tolerances. If you get the tolerances a bit higher, I find that things like this just tend to be a bit more when they come out. They're a bit more pucker and they're a bit tidier than your uh, than your average. Uh, forge work sometimes. Not every time and there are some people out there that can forge like beasts. Um, so part two of this this page uh, will be coming up. Oh, I didn't tell you the page number. I'll give you the page uh, it number. It is page 36 and 37, palette 18, uh, calipers etc. So uh, that's the page number uh, and um, that's what we made. I am going to make the dividers um, and hopefully that's going to be as interesting. There's going to be a little bit of machine work in there but not, not as much as this time. Um, yeah, so that's everything. So thank you for joining me. Um, the last thing I'd like to do before we go any further is just chuck all the names on my Patreons up. These first three videos are paid, or oh, first, probably might be six, because the next one that we're making after the calipers is an axe. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it all in one go because it's a fire axe. And so that might take a couple of episodes to get through. So you guys at Patreons are being very lucky. You're getting yourself some really nice stuff and lots of videos. And thank you to you guys for subscribing and being part of the channel. It really means a lot that you guys uh, join in each week with the videos that I put up and the content that I produce and it's really great to have you guys here as part of the team so thank you for that. Uh, so yes, thank you for joining me, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did enjoy this video remember to leave a like and subscribe and if you aren't a subscriber remember to click on that subscribe button and click notifications and then go to your settings and to change your notifications so you get notifications of my videos. I think I said notifications about 10 times then. Anyway, um, yes, um, Put some comments down below, tell me what you thought of these calipers. I think they've come out absolutely dapper. There weren't any measurements in the book for this particular piece, um, so unfortunately I've gone off my instincts for this. Um, but uh, yeah, they work really well, and the little springs have worked quite well. Um, hopefully you didn't mind me using the lathe too much to do some of this, and drilling the holes and doing those little bits of machining. Um, yeah, that's everything. So thank you for joining me. I will chuck a video up here to me doing a Patreon thing. I will chuck another video down here to something else. This is the Patreon if you want to go and check it out and support the channel. And down here is the subscribe button. Thanks guys. Bye bye.